Join us as we count down the top 20 England batsmen of all time. Who are we going with on number 20, man? Yes, we're going with W.J. Grace, one of the great batsmen of the early centuries in English cricket. 22 test matches, 1,098 runs. He played from 1880 to 1899. Best of 170. Average of 51.06. One of cricket's greatest icons, Grace dominated the sport in early years, scoring 54,211 first-class runs and making significant impact on the game's development. It was one of the first stars in cricket. WG Grace comes in at number 20 for us. Let's get into mark number 19, man. Yes, uh, we're going with Nasser Hussain, former England captain, actually born in India, played for Essex. 96 test matches, 5,764 runs, best of 207, average of 37.18, 14 centuries. Took over in a transitional period and one of the most impactful skippers during his career. Carried the team, very well respected player in the English cricket and all around the world as a commentator as well these days. So Nasser Hussain, number 19 for us. Who are we going with on number 18, Mark? Ted Dexter, 62 test matches, 4,502 runs, best of 205, average of 47.89, nine centuries. And the thing with all these English batsmen, their career best is either double or grandfather century or triple. So the English batsmen are always known for playing the long, they love batting and love occupying the crease. And Ted Dexter was an aggressive type of a batsman. For it, as you said, Mark, 4,502 runs, 62 tests at an average of 47.89. Ted Dexter, number 18 for us. Who are we going with at number 17? John Edward, 77 test matches, 5,138 runs, best of 310, not out, average of 43.54s, 12th century. He was a really gritty, stubborn batsman. Held up the West Indies in the late 70s, late 60s and early 70s. Was a batsman full of character. A renowned for his steadfast and meticulous batting technique. Born on June 21, 1937, he was part of a cricketing family and was particularly noted for his tenacious approach at the crease, making him one of England's most reliable batsmen during the 1960s and early 70s. John Edrich comes in at number 17 for us. Who are we going with at number 16, Mark? Yes, we're going with Ian Bell. Elegant batsman, easy in the eyes. Like I always told a lot of players, uh, a lot of young players, if you want a batsman to copy, copy Ian Bell. His technique was immaculate. Some defense and his strokes were beautiful and aggressive when he played. 118 test matches, 7,727 runs, best of 185, average of 42.69, 22 test match centuries. Renowned for his stylish and technically sound batting born on April 11th, 1962. Bell was a key figure in England test team, particularly during their ascent to the top of the world rankings in 2011. Again, known for his elegant stroke playing and a beautiful cover drive that he had. Ian Bell comes in at number 16 for us. And guys, let us know what you guys think so far of these picks. Make sure in the comments, you guys let us know what your picks are as well. And before we move on, I'm going to give you guys our first quiz question. We're going to bring you two quiz questions during this episode. So there's going to be another one. So this is the first of the second. This fast bowler was the first to take 300 wickets in test cricket and has an extremely impressive average of 21.57. Can you guess his name? We'll drop this answer shortly. Who are we going with on number 15, man? Yes, we're going with Tom Graveney, a solid batsman, technically sung, gritty, played the long innings for England. 79 test matches, 4,882 runs, best of 258, an average of 44. Punch. Three eight averaging in the forties back in those days and uh, uncovered pitch pitches in the in the sixties and seventies you had to be good to really produce an outstanding career of seventy nine test matches. We're known for his graceful batting style and prolific run scoring ability. Born on June 16, 1927, Graveney made his mark in cricket history with his fluid strokes and strong character both on and off the field. You know, in domestic cricket, Graveney was a stalwart, playing a significant role in their first 
ever county championship win in 1964 and again in 1965. Over his extensive first class career, he amassed 47,793 runs in first class cricket and made 122 centuries, showcasing his longevity and consistency in the game. Tom Graveney comes in at number 15 for us. Who are we going with at number 14, Mark? Peter May, one of the early stalwarts of English cricket, batting superstar, 66 test matches, 4,537 runs, best of 285 not out, average of 46.77, 13 centuries. One of the most accomplished batsmen of his era, born on December 31st, 1929 in Reading, Berkshire. May played for England from 1951 to 1961, serving as captain from 1955 to 1961 during his international career may was known for his elegant and authoritative batting style characterized by his strong drives and robust defensive technique peter may comes in at number 14 for us who are we going with at number 13 mark yeah dennis compton another great english batsman 78 test matches 5807 runs best of 278 average of 50.06 17th centuries he was an iconic English cricketer whose flamboyant style and charismatic presence made him one of the most popular sportsmen of his time. Born on May 23, 1918 in Hendon, Middlesex, Compton, was not only a cricketing hero, but also a talented footballer playing as winger for Arsenal Football Club. In cricket, Compton made his mark as a dynamic left-handed batsman and occasional leg spin bowler. His batting was adventurous and attacking characterized by swift footwork and a wide range of strokes making him a crowd favorite so dennis compton comes in at number 13 for us who are we going with at number 12 mark the man from kent colin cowdery 114 matches 7624 runs best of 182 average of 44.06 22 centuries known as a gentleman in the cricket arena back in those early days cowdery made his test debut for england 1954 and played until 1975, a testament to his longevity and adaptability. Kadri was a prominent figure in English cricket, celebrated for his skills, sportsmanship, and gentlemanly conduct on and off the cricket field. Born December 24th, 1932 in Bangalore, India, he moved to England and became one of the most enduring cricketers in the sport's history. So Colin Cowdery comes in at number 12. Who are we going with 11? Yeah, so we're going with Michael Vaughan, the elegant opening batsman, our top order batsman from Yorkshire. Played 82 test matches, 5,719 runs, best of 197, average of 41.44, 18th centuries, and remember for his remarkable knocks in the 2005 Ashes. Vaughan born on October 29, 1974 in Manchester, England, led England to historic Ashes victory in 2005. Their first Ashes win since 1986-87. Juan was an elegant right-handed batsman known for his strategic acumen and leadership qualities. He made his test debut for England in 1999 and quickly established himself as a key player. Michael Juan comes in at number 11 for us. Before we move on, we asked you guys a quiz question. So I'm going to give you guys an answer to that question before we move on to number 10. We asked you guys, this fast bowler was the first to take 300 wickets in test cricket and has an extremely impressive bowling average of 21.57 can you guess his name we're going to bring up the answer on the screen the answer is fred truman or fiery fred was one of the greatest fast bowlers to have played for england and was first to reach 300 wickets fiery fred is the answer hope you guys got that one right and stay tuned for another one coming up shortly who are we going with on number 10 man yeah david gower elegant left-handed batsman i mean just really beauty the highs of the behold when he batted watching a classical movie, Gower played 117 test matches, 8,231 runs, a best of 215, average of 44.25 and 18 centuries. And you see a trend with most of these English batsmen, always in the 20s centuries, 18 to 20 centuries, and always a career best of a double century or grandfather century. Absolutely, man. He was widely regarded for his elegant and effortless batting style. Born on April 1st, 1957 in Turnbridge Wells, Kent Grover was one of the most stylish left-handed batsmen of his era, known for his fluid strokes and serene demeanor at the crease. Apart from his test career, Gower also played in 114 one-day international, scoring over 3,000 runs 
runs. He served as England's captain for several years during the 80s, leading the team in both test and ODI formats. Leadership was characterized by a relaxed approach, which sometimes drew criticism, but also reflected his personality and philosophy toward the game. So David Gower comes in as our all-time number 10 English batter of all time. Let us know what you guys think of this top 20 list so far guys let us know in the comments and make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and before we move on i want to let you guys know that this video is brought to you by matthew max cricket bat sponsored by msda this is a two-tone bat if you notice that's two-tone 12 grains all right nice dot build profile two pounds nine ounces all right nice tick toe 38 millimeters edges 39 millimeters nice pickup this one is the matt power you know my son name is matthew so this is the matt power you know i name it after matthew hayden Powerful left-handed batsman from Australia. So this is the map power. You can check me out. All right. This has beautiful ping. Nice balance as well. Yeah. You know, and it wouldn't really break your, your budget as well. Check out this bat. I'll link Mark's Facebook page in the description. And I'll also put his WhatsApp number. So series buyers, make sure you guys shoot over a message to MSDA Cricket on the WhatsApp number. And Mark will be able to get back to you guys and let you guys know whatever details or questions you guys have. If you guys want to look at any of the products, Mark has it up on his page on Facebook. So be sure to check it out there and stay tuned for MSDA website launch coming up soon. When you when you support MSDA, I always sponsor Kid in the Caribbean. It doesn't matter where in the Caribbean you're from, Jamaica, in the north to Trinidad in the south. Once you're doing good, I like to look at the scores and everything like that and I make my own judgment. If somebody, if people pressure me, I don't do it, but I just like to do it on my own. So if you support me, I could take some of the proceeds and contribute towards a kid. And I always like to look at the kid's situation. Maybe they don't have a father, they don't have a mom. You know, some kind of advert so a kid who really need help, that's what I like helping. Mark has a motto, right, with MSDA, and he always says, roll with the underdog. When everybody, <laughs> else give, when everybody else give up on you, I don't give up on you. I give you a chance, a second chance, a third chance. All I need you that's to do it, is be honest with yourself and be respectable. So if you want to roll with the underdog, check out MSDA Cricket. All right, Mark, let's move on to number nine. Yes, number nine is Jeffrey Boycott, one of the model open batsmen in, in cricket who love to bat, never want to give away his wicket. You know, I like to reference to ref Jeffrey Boycott a lot of times when I'm talking to the youngsters because this man would bat all day and would be in the nets at six in the morning when he's batting overnight. So that just tell you, you know, how good he was. He had a very good technique. They call him selfish, but I won't say he was selfish. He was doing his job. As a batsman, you're there to make runs and occupy the crease. 108 test matches, 8,114 runs, best of 246 not out, average of 47.72, 22 test centuries. And why rate Jeffrey Boycott? A lot of time he stood up to the West Indies pitch battery attack. Everything West Indies threw at him, he never ran. He was always one of the batsmen to just be gritty and just fight fire with his um, defense, his good defense. Fiery character, yeah, but a good batsman. Renowned for his formidable batting technique and tenacious approach to the game. Born on October 21st, 1940. 40 in Fitzwilliam, Yorkshire. Boycott was a right-handed opening batsman known for his solid defensive play and immense concentration, making his test debut for England in 1964. He was noted for his meticulous attention to detail and his ability to bat for long periods. In addition to test cricket, Boycott also played in 36 one-day international matches, scoring the first ever ODI century by an Englishman. His playing style was sometimes characterized for being overly cautious, but his effectiveness and resilience at the crease were undeniable. Jeffrey Boycott, one of the greats of the game, comes in at number nine for us. So let's move on to number eight, Mark. Who are we going with on number eight, man? The number eight is current English batsman, Giroud. 140 test matches, 11,736 runs, best of 254, average of 49.72, and he has 20, 31 centuries, and he's currently playing for England. He could end up with about 35 or 36 centuries in his test career. Renowned for his technical proficiency and consistency at the crease, born on December 30th, 1990 in Sheffield, Yorkshire. Root is considered one of the finest batsmen of his generation. Apart from his batting prowess, Root is also a part-time off-spinner, providing valuable bowling options to his team. His leadership tenure included leading England to several significant victories, although he stepped down as captain in 2022 to focus more on 
on his batting. Root is celebrated not just for his achievements, but also for his sportsmanship and calm demeanor, making him a respected figure in the cricketing world. He continues to be a central figure for England in international cricket, consistently contributing with impactful performances. And as you mentioned, Mark, he could end up being probably the greatest England batsman to have ever played once he hangs up his boots, probably right next to some of the other names we're going to bring up on this list. Let's move on to number seven, Mark. Who are we going with on number seven? Graham Gooch, one of the best opening batsmen England ever produced. Was excellent to pace bowling. Gooch played 118 test matches, 8,900 runs, best of 3 3 3. Average of 42.58, 20 centuries. And why I respect Graham Goods so much, he stood up to West Indies Space Battery as well back in the 80s. Always fought fire with fire. You know, he was one of the West Indies, the English opening batsmen or batsmen, always seems to be making runs against West Indies Space Attack. One of the most accomplished cricketers in the history of English cricket, renowned for his robust batting and leadership skills, born on June, July 23rd, 1953 in Whips Cross, London. Gooch had a long and distinguished career for England and Essex. Gooch made his test debut for England in 1975 and his last test in 1995. Throughout his career, he played 118 test matches, 8,900 plus runs, 42 plus average, including 20 centuries. One of his most memorable performances came against India at Lords in 1990, where he scored a monumental 333 in the first innings, followed by 123 in the second innings, showcasing his ability to dominate bowling attacks. And Gooch was also prolific in one day internationals, appearing in 125 matches and scoring over 4,200 runs. He led England to the final of the 1992 Cricket World Cup. Although they were runners up to Pakistan, his leadership was characterized by a strong work ethic and a demanding approach to preparation and fitness traits that he instilled in his teammate. Grant Gooch comes in at number seven for us. And before we move on to number seven, I'm going to give you guys our second quiz question that we were going to bring you guys and we'll drop the answer, you know, right at the end of the video for you guys for this question. So the second quiz quiz question, which former England cricketer died in Barbados during the third test in 1981 while on coaching duties? This may be a little bit tough one for you guys, but we'll drop the answer right at the end of the video for you guys. Here's the question again, which former England cricketer died in Barbados during the third test in 1981? while on coaching duties and we'll answer this right at the end so stay tuned guys and let us know again what you guys think of this amazing list so far so let's move on to number six where are we going yes number six kevin peterson an orthodox style of batting aggressive bold fearless he played 104 test matches for england a best of 227 runs average of 47.28 22 centuries and really batted with flair when he played for england um 8,000 181 runs. He played some really crucial in in, in the Ashes in 2005 Ashes. That really made him a hallmark for him, put him on the map on the world stage. And after that, his batting had blossomed from game to game and grew from strength to strength. Yeah, man, he was widely regarded as one of the most talented and controversial players in the history of the sport. Born on June 27, 1980 in Peter. Maritzburg, South Africa. Peterson qualified to play for England through his English mother and moved to England in his early 20s. Peterson made his England debut in 2004 in one of the internationals and soon after in Test Cricket, where he quickly became known for his aggressive and flamboyant batting style. His ability to play audacious shots and dominate bowlers made him a standout performer on the international stage. Over his career, Peterson played 104 Test matches, scoring over 8,000 runs, 47 average, 23 cents entries and also played 136 ODIs, 4,400 runs, 40 plus average. His career was not without controversy, including several high profile disputes with teammates and the English cricket board, which eventually led to his somewhat premature departure from international cricket in 2014. So again, one of the most talented cricketers to have ever come through English cricket, Kevin Peterson comes in at number six for us. And let's move on to number five, Mark. We're getting into the top five, man. Number five, Wally Hammond. 85 test matches, 7,249 runs, best of 336 not out, average of 58.45 and 22 centuries. And again, look at this, a best of 336, 22 centuries and an average of 58.45. That's peaks volumes. 
a great player between 1927 and 1947. Yeah, man. Wally Hammond was one of England's greatest cricketers, celebrated for his powerful batting, effective fast medium bowling, and a brilliant fielding. Born on June 19, 1903 in Dover, England, Hammond was a dominant force in cricket during the 1920s and 30s. Hammond's test career spanned from 1927 to 1947, during which he played 85 test matches for England, scoring 7,249 runs at an impressive average of 58. 0.45 with 22 centuries again and 24 half centuries great conversion rate his highest test score of 336 against against new zealand in 1933 was a record at the time and demonstrated his ability to play long and commanding innings hammond's cricketing career was not without its challenges including health issues and personal difficulties but his on-field performances remained consistent consistently outstanding he was a key figure in english cricket both before and after world war ii wally hammond passed away on july 1st 1965 but he left behind a record it cements him as a true cricketing legend wally hammond number five comes in at number five let's move on to number four mark ken barrington one of the best english batsmen in the early 60s very respected 82 test matches 6,806 runs, best of 256, average of 58. 58- 20 centuries. Exceptionally skilled English cricketer, renowned for his robust and reliable batting style. Born on November 24, 1930 in Reading, Berkshire, Barrington was one of England's most dependable batsmen during the 50s and 60s. His international career spanned over 1955 to 1968, and he scored 6,800 runs at an average of 58, played 82 test matches, the second highest average among English cricketers who have played at least 20 innings. Batting was characterized by a compact technique and immense mental toughness, making him particularly effective against fast bowling. For his cautious yet solid approach, Barrington scored 20 centuries in test, showcasing his ability to build innings carefully and play long knocks. His highest test score of 256 came against Australia in 1964. Again, a testament to play big innings under pressure. So Ken Barrington, one of the all-time greats, comes in at number four for us. Let's move on to top three, Mark. Who are we going with at number three, man? Alistair Cook, 161 test matches, 12,472 runs, the leading scorer in English test history so far. Best of 294, average of 45.35, 33 centuries, typical opening, old school opening batsman. One of the most prolific batsmen in the history of test cricket, born on December 25th, 1984. Cook spent the majority of his international career as an opening batsman for England, and he also served as the captain of the test team. Cook made his test debut for England in 2006 against India and quickly established himself as a key player. Known for his calm demeanor and technical proficiency, Cook's ability to bat for long periods made him a formidable opponent in the longest format of the game. Over, over his career, he played 161 test matches. 12,472 runs, an average of 45.35, making him England's all-time leading run scorer in Test cricket. One of Cook's most notable achievements was during the 2010-2011 Ashes series in Australia, where he scored an incredible 766 runs across five matches, helping England secure a series victory. His highest Test score of 294 came against India in 2011 at Ed Bastion testament to his endurance and concentration at the crease so sir alistair cook comes in at number three an all-time great let's get into number two mark who are we going with for number two man len hutton one of the early greats of english cricket 79 test matches 6971 runs best of 364 average of 56.67 19 centuries remarkable yeah one of the legendary english cricketers renowned for his technical excellence and determination at the crease born on june 23 1916 in full neck yorkshire hutton is often considered as one of the greatest batsmen in the history of cricket and made his test debut for england in 1937 and quickly established himself as a key player in the team he is best known for her setting a world record for the highest individual score in a test match, scoring 364 runs against Australia at the Oval in 1938, a record that stood for nearly 20 years. The innings was a testament to his concentration and stamina qualities that define his batting style. Over his test career, which was interrupted by a World War II, Hutton played 79 matches and amassed 6,971 runs at an impressive average of 56.67. His ability to anchor the innings and his technical skill against both pace and spin bowling were highly admired. 
uh, and was particularly noted for his cover drive a stroke he executed with elegance and precision there's a rumor that he was one of the first players to play the reverse sweep so maybe not the reverse scoop but the reverse sweep an early pioneer and an innovator of the game sir len hutton comes in at number two for us and before we move on to number one which you guys will have to take a guess at. Mark will give you the details and you guys will take a guess and we'll drop the answer right at the end of the video. But before that, let me give you guys the answer to our quiz question number two. We had asked you guys which former England cricketer died in Barbados during the third test in 1981 while on coaching duties. Mark, do you want to give our viewers the answer for this one, man? Ken Barrington, he was the assistant coach in the England touring team in 1981. During the test match, the third test match at Barbados, he suffered a heart attack and died. So Ken Barrington was the answer there, guys. Request question two, thank you for playing along and thank you for letting us know your answers in the comments. Before we move on to number one, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, check out the Reverse Coop merch shop in the description below that supports youth cricket development in the USA and beyond and other nonprofits that we support. Um, so definitely check the shop out or check out our membership sections. We have our other links in the description where you guys can explore and, you know, check out other ways where you guys support the channel. Let's move on to number one, Mark. Let's give viewers the detail on number one and we'll announce the answer right at the end of the video. Yes, he played 61 test matches, 5,410 runs, best of 211, average of 56.94 and 15 centuries. But besides that, he was often referred to as the master. In first class cricket, he scored over 197 centuries. Scored 61,760 first class runs, more than any other player. And as Mark mentioned, made 197 centuries. Answer, Mark, you want to let the viewers know. The answer to number one, man. Jack Hops. If you haven't checked out our top 10 West Indies ODI batsman of all time, you can check it out on the screen right here. We'll link it in the end screen. Mark Arden and Nabil Khan from the Reverse Scoop signing off.